Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. All right, I am going to give American Ultra some credit. It does not hold back. It wasn't made by Namby Pambies and isn't suitable for viewing by Namby Pambies. For better or worse, this movie really goes for it, man. The violence is splatteringly graphic and sudden and frequent and awesome. The list of interesting characters in this movie, all of them having rich backstories, is surprisingly deep, especially for a comedy. There is high drama, touching romance, and an abundance of pathos, even for the villains. This movie flies around in many different directions with its tone, but it always does so full throttle, pedal to the metal, are you not entertained? As a movie, it's a failure, but it's an interesting one, and one with enough legitimate direct hits to merit a recommendation. But that's enough of the summary, let's get in depth already. Now the story of American Ultra is simple. It's the born identity with weed. Yay! There's a stoner named Mike Howell. He's played by Jesse Eisenberg, and he's actually a sleeper agent for some shadowy US government agency. When the order comes down from above to terminate the program, meaning kill the poor sap, one lone dissenter played by Connie Britton decides to activate him and give him a fighting chance. Now, with his small West Virginia town sealed off and an army of highly trained assassins closing in, Mike must kick, punch, stab, shoot, and explode his way to freedom, and maybe, just maybe along the way, find the perfect moment to propose to his girlfriend. And if there's time, eat some nachos and take a nap. If there's time. To start with, Jesse Eisenberg is a little miscast. Now, he's a great actor, but I just don't buy him as a constantly baked stoner. He plays the majority of the movie with a rigidity that seems out of place and made me wish the role had been played by someone more like James Franco. Someone would be a little more loosey-goosey. That way, when his character turns on a dime from burnout to badass, the contrast is more dynamic. He'd go from wobbly like Jack Sparrow or something, woo! to tight and accurate. Cha, cha, blah, blah. That would be way more fun to watch. Now, Jesse Eisenberg here goes from stiff and jumpy to sort of a vacant robotic killing machine. The character also has goofy moments written for him where his character is supposed to do or say something that is absolutely boneheaded, but Jesse Eisenberg doesn't play them off convincingly, probably because he just seems like he's smarter than his character. I guess he just didn't quite sell me that he could be dumb as a post. One thing that does come off well, and that I think is the movie's biggest strength, is the romance between Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart. And I would like to officially, right now, say that as someone who never got the appeal of Kristen Stewart as either an object of desire, or in the larger sense, as an actress, mea culpa. I kinda get it now. She is desirable and compelling in this movie in a way that I've never seen before. She and Jesse Eisenberg appeared together in Adventureland uh, in 2009, I think, and their chemistry is still palpable. And their love feels real in this movie, and it feels grounded, and it feels out of a completely different movie. That's probably the common theme here. None of the elements in this movie are at all bad or poorly done. They just don't feel like they belong in the same movie. There are scenes of high tension drama followed up with slapstick, which is followed up by a scene which makes you feel sorry for certain characters right before a scene where you see those characters casually splattered to death or without getting a proper send off. You get the feeling that if the movie took itself slightly more seriously and toned down the wanton gore, or took itself slightly less seriously and played more of the spy drama for laughs instead of intensity, then they'd really have something special here. But in the state that it's currently in, this movie is an entertaining mess. Seeing it as an exercise in constantly re-engaging as an audience member, changing your mindset from scene to scene instead of discovering the rhythm of the movie and then getting swept up in it, which is what you're supposed to do, 
you feel like you're channel surfing between several really well executed movies. This is something that Pineapple Express did really well, which ends up as sort of a buddy comedy first with solid action elements and legitimately threatening villains. There are moments in American Ultra that get way too dark to be in a comedy, and dramatic moments that add weight to a movie that has previously reveled in its silliness. It's all over the place! On the one hand, mentioning its faults can almost seem like nitpicking. I mean, what's there really to complain about with a movie that's so willing to deploy such outstanding utility players as Walton Goggins, Tony Hale, and Bill Pullman? Topher Grace plays a great weenie, and we all know that, but here he is an immature government bureaucrat who belittles, demeans, and even murders anyone who stands between him and his ego. The way he chews scenery and spits condescension is a treat to watch, and the cherry on top of a variety of solid performances in this movie. On the other hand, talking too much about the film's strengths would actually oversell the overall experience. It's got good performances, high drama, touching romance, tense action. Sounds like a slam dunk. Go out and see it. Four stars, right? Well, just because disparate elements are great on their own doesn't mean they work together, or else the most popular sandwich at McDonald's would be the McGangbang Deluxe. Look at that thing. Now, I love Big Macs, I love fries, I love chicken sandwiches, and I love fish fillets. But in one bite? That sounds like high calorie chaos. With regard to American Ultra, I can report that I laughed at points. I cheered at points. I was moved at points. I was on the edge of my seat at points. And I was never, ever bored. So for that, I award American Ultra a large bag of popcorn. If you have the patience for it, there's some good stuff here. But your experience will vary from bite to bite. All right, that does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Subscribe so you'll never miss a review. And stay tuned, there's more reviews coming at you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. Now, puff, puff, give, baby.